And so, sometimes in a nuclear reactor, it is no longer efficient to keep the fuel rods around and we have to replace the fuel rods. So this is an example of how the fuel rods can be kept safely underwater. We can also bury nuclear waste uh, inside landfills, but at a certain depth. All right. In this example from summer 14, May June 14, paper 42, we will look at what happens when some of this water is contaminated and how long should we leave it before the water is safe to use again. So if you're ready, let's go and look at the example now. Some water becomes contaminated with iodine-131, the activity in iodine-131 in 1 kilogram is 460 becquerel. So it's 460 becquerel, 1 kg. So if you have 1 kg of water, which is about 1 litre, then you take it and you test the activity, you measure the activity, it's 460 becquerel. You are given the half-life is 8.1 days. Define radioactive half-life. So half-life here is called uh, the time taken because this is always about time. So time taken for the number of radioactive nuclei. Another acceptable, acceptable uh, form is the time taken for the activity. There's another number of radioactive nuclei or activity of the isotope the unstable isotope to be reduced by half-life, right? Half its initial value. Okay, so this kind of uh, definition is fairly common. Just make sure you know how to write and also relate it to what happens, what is the activity of the isotope half its initial value, or number of radioactive nuclei, half its initial value. So the mark here is when you mention time taken for either this or this, there'll be one mark, okay? And to be half its initial value is the second mark. All right, so of course you need to score the first point because this is, uh, this is the first point that is important, right? This is your M1. And the second one is A1. Meaning if you just write half its initial value, you won't get any mark because it makes no sense. Okay. So B1, calculate the number of iodine-131 atoms in one kilogram of this water. So we are going to have to look at the activity because you know the activity is equal to 460 becquerel in one kg of water. Hmm? Okay, so I know activity is also equal to lambda n, right? This is a important relationship when we want to convert from A to number of nuclei. So this is the radioactive the activity of becquerel. So I put I mean radioactivity of iodine. So I put four sixty here. Lambda is ln two over half life. And this is n. So we are looking for n. I will rearrange my uh, equation a bit. Okay, so n here will be equal to 460 times half-life divided by ln 2. All right, I'm going to continue up here. So this one I can press calculator. I'm not that worried. Half-life that is given, let me scroll up a bit, is 8.1 days. Okay, so we're going to substitute 8.1 days, but it needs to be converted to seconds. So whenever, put a note here for you, for Becquerel, so this is a SI unit, meaning your lambda, your half-life uh, must also be SI. So your 8.1 days have to be converted to second. So one day got 24 hours, one hour got 3600 zero, zero seconds. Right, 60 times 60. And then you will press your calculator. So 460 divided by ln 2 times 8.1 times 24 times 3600. That would give me 4.64, 2468 
times 10 to the power of 8. Okay, so it, of course it has to be a large number. So this is the amount of uh, iodine-131 atoms inside 1 kg of water. And they are radioactive, by the way. Wow, a lot. Yes. Okay, so three marks. One mark is for this equation. All right, so remember to write A is equal to lambda N. This is your C1 mark. So you need to have this equation first. And then you need to show your substitution. So the substitution here would be either this form here. I think this one, this is the substitution. And your final answer is one mark. We don't show clear substitution and working, you will lose mark. Even if your answer is correct. Okay, so let's move on to B part two. Part two, an amount of one mole of water. Okay, so they tell you the molar mass. Lah. One mole of water has a mass of 18 gram. Okay, so just in case you don't do chemistry, this is molar mass, which happens to be, if you think about it, H2O is water. So the mass of hydrogen is one plus one the mass number or the nuclear number and oxygen is 16 that's why you get 18. so hence the molar mass is 18 gram okay right, this is for you if you don't have chemistry in your arsenal all right calculate the ratio of the molecules of water in one kg of water to the number of new number of uh, iodine-131 in 1 kg of contaminated water. So we have calculated in the previous part the number of iodine-131 in 1 kg of water, which is this much. So basically, I can substitute this one in here. Lah. Okay, number of atoms of iodine-131. Now what we need is the number of molecules of water in 1 kg of water. So how many moles? Well, I guess you can use ratio, right? Because the idea here is 18 gram is one mole. And one kg is 1,000 gram. So 1,000 gram will be 1,000 divided by 18. That'll be 55.5555. Okay, so I'm just going to take a few SF mole all right so hence number of molecules will be equal to the number of moles 55.556 multiplied by the Avogadro constant okay so always think about mole like a dozen okay because one mole is the same as the Avogadro constant so that means if i want to find what n is in one kg of water I will just substitute with Avogadro constant, multiply only. Ma. Okay? So, mole is like a dozen. Now. One dozen is 12, two dozen is 12 times 2, three dozen is 3 times 16. You know the idea of dozen? One dozen, two dozen, three dozen. The idea of mole. One mole, two mole, three mole. And this mole here will be your 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. Okay, it's just another number. 12 is nicer for your brain, but avocado constant is also okay. Okay, so I think for the sake of uh, safety, I will write down the value of Na because normally the mark scheme actually shows the substitution rather than leave it as a constant like that, like so. Okay, 55.556. Actually, It'll be better if you keep the fraction, now, but never mind. At this point, it is okay. 3.34, 4, 5, times 10 to the power of 25. Okay, so this is the number of molecules inside of uh, our little 1 kg of water. It's a lot, of course, because 1 kg is... A lot of volume. But now, hence, if you want to find the ratio, just right here, the ratio is equal to, this is 3.344 by times 10 to the power 25, divided by, in 1 kg of contaminated water, 
we have 4.64 times 10 to the power of 8 iodine. Okay, so I'm going to divide this by 4.64, 8, 7.21. 7.2 so what is important is when you round it to 2 SF you get the same answer la. the last SF you want to write also can don't want to write also can same also never mind different also never mind okay so 7.2 times 10 to the power of 6 so if you're wondering why this one so little mark it's because they expect that you can negotiate the number of moles fairly easily they are making an assumption that everybody who do chemistry should do physics la. no a fair assumption right but it is what it is. So if you multiply this, you show this multiplication, you show this, I mean, I guess it would be safer to write out instead of 5.56 to write 1000 over 18. So 1000 over 18 times Na is one mark. La. This is your M, your C1. But I understand, and I think most lecture, most uh, examiners will accept because you have shown the ratio. Okay, or if you're feeling insecure, you write this one like this. Lah. So it'll be 1000 over 18 times N in. Okay, one mole is 18 gram. 1000 gram, how many mole? 1000 divided by 18. So then we can find the ratio and get the answer. This is A1. All right, last part. An acceptable limit for activity of iodine-131 in water has been set to 460 becquerel per kg. So we kind of want to change this from 460, back, from 460 to 170, my bad. So if you think about your decay graph, or decay graph, this is activity, this is time, goes like that. Now. So this is 460, we'd like it to drop to 170, okay? back around. So calculate the time in days. So basically I want what is this time for the activity of the contaminated water to be reduced to this level. So first things first, we have to write the equation. So if you remember from the formula sheet that's given to you, they will give the equation x is equal to x naught e x p negative lambda t, right? So you go and change it to a is equal to a naught E negative lambda t. Okay, and just remind yourself lambda is equal to ln 2 over half life. So just write all of this out first, lah, so that you need to use ln 2 over half life or 0 0.693. So now we know that the initial activity A0 is 460. We know the final activity that we want, A is uh, 170. And this is equal to e to the negative lambda t. So I'm going to bring the 460 over and divide. 170 over 460 is equal to e negative lambda t. Right? Exponent bring over, solve it. 170 over 460. And this will be equal to negative lambda t. Okay. Do we have lambda? You may be thinking, nah, miss, we calculated lambda already, what? In the previous part of the question here. Well, actually, we didn't really calculate lambda. La. This whole thing is your lambda. I mean, your half-life. Half-life, your lambda. We didn't really calculate lambda. Okay, so right now, it's time to calculate lambda. Of course, you could have calculated lambda here. And if you did, that is okay. Just make sure, again, you show your working clearly. So now we're going to show lambda. Okay, so calculating lambda, we're going to use this uh, half-life over t half. Maybe a space. Okay. So lambda is ln 2. Our half-life is 8.1 days times uh, 3 times 24 hours times 3600 zero, zero seconds. Okay, so we can now find our lambda. It's going to be short because 2 days is, I mean 8.1 days is pretty long. So value of lambda is going to be small. 9.9 .9 zero times 10 to the power of negative seven second negative one okay so i can substitute here ln 170 over 460 is equal to negative 9.9 .9 times 10 to the power of negative 70. so now we can press our calculator all right 
whenever this number here is less than one, this lawn is negative. So negative and negative will cancel out one. Don't you worry. If the negative don't cancel out, that means something is wrong. You substitute wrongly. You understood wrongly. Okay. So this will be negative 0 0.9954. I'm doing this for those who need it, lah, especially those who are not familiar with exponents. But you can always skip steps, okay? So I'll take the answer, divide by 9.9, .9, e negative 7. And I will get quite long, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. My t... I should double check. 9.9. Yep, I'm right. It's okay. 1.01 minus 1.005454. 1 1.01 1 .01 times 10 to the power of 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep. Second. But they want it in days. Hi, uh, so we need to convert it to days, okay? So how do you convert these to days? Well, we then go and say, hence, t is equal to 1.01 .01 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by, okay, one day, 24 hours. One hour, 3600 seconds. Okay, so converting these to days. Okay, 11.64. Days. Okay, we can put 11.6. So that's it. This is the question. Where are your three marks? Well, one mark is for both equations. This one and this one are your uh, C1 marks. All right. And then substitution. Basically, we are looking for correct substitution for A and A0 and correct substitution for lambda. That's some form of lambda that looks correct. Lah. Either you put ln2 here or you calculate outside also can. So this is C1. And then the final answer is C1. All right, so make sure you convert it to days. So that's it. If let's say the water is contaminated, we maybe need to leave it out for a while, lah. like maybe 12 days or something, and wait for the radiation level to be safe again. There is no such thing as zero radiation because there's always background radiation. So this is a safe level for us to wait. So normally questions like this, right? Uh, when you want to solve exponent equations, you can use the equation directly. Just be careful and read carefully and substitute carefully. Okay, so that's it for this question. I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.